here off the Washington coast, actually headed to Orcas Island to talk to a longtime lawman, Norm Stamper. He was a champion of change to legalize pot in this state. And I want to ask Norm whether he thinks the fumes of that change may drift across the water and one day impact Canada. It's safer than alcohol and healthier than tobacco and we are losing enormous sums of money by continuing to prohibit it. Norm Stamper spent years fighting the drug war as a cop and ended his career as Seattle's police chief. He now lives a quiet life on this island. After a successful state vote to work to legalize marijuana in his state, he sees legal shops opening up even here. We're a community of 4,500. I would imagine we'll see one, maybe two or three, but certainly no more. Washington's method of regulation of that particular commodity calls for the creation of standalone stores. Uh, I've heard people say, well, I think I'll just add this to my business. No, you can't do it. Well, what you can do is apply for a license, and if you're granted that license and willing to pay the upfront fees and the annual fees, open a business of standalone sales of marijuana. And he believes we'll feel the effects in Canada. I think it's likely to have a huge impact. Estimates of the BEC bud industry in British Columbia range up to seven to nine billion dollars. That's an awful lot of money. If that product, that commodity is made legal here, there's a very good chance that we're gonna take some business away from Canada. Uh, it's not the intention, of course, but that is what will happen. It's unclear what legal pot shops would look like. Would they be based on the wine model of business or perhaps a coffee one? What is clear is that despite the prohibition, a lot of Canadians are still lighting up. And you can see some Here's a man who wouldn't mind if the Canadian pot industry were shaken up. Dana Larson runs a medicinal cannabis dispensary here in downtown Vancouver. He's also preparing to launch a YES initiative in the province that he hopes will mirror what's happening in Washington and Colorado. Our goal is to start by decriminalizing cannabis possession. I think most people can recognize that someone who smokes cannabis and is otherwise a law-abiding citizen should not be bothered. And then we have to figure out the details, the age limits, the point of sale, how we get cannabis out there to those who want it. But not everyone agrees with him, as you can hear by this exchange with a passerby outside his shop. There's a bunch of Enjoy your beers and go your own way. do you know about it? Just be mellow out, man. You and your job to be special, you goose. Hola, come on in. Down the street is a main headquarters for pot advocates in this country. It includes a shop and herb museum and political and social media offices. It's also one of the only places where smoking on the job is, well, you know, expected. <laughs> Greg Williams is a long-time activist. He's been smoking pot since he was 14. And he sees a global shift on the war on drugs, at least when it comes to his beloved pot. There's other countries involved here that are talking out too. Uruguay has legalized marijuana and potentially all drugs. Countries all around there are gonna have to do the same, will want to do the same. Argentina came out today and said they want to do that. Central America's come out, Mexico's come out, India came out. This is how alcohol prohibition was ended uh, back in the last century in the United States. The state of New York said to the federal government, we're not going to enforce it. If you want to, come on in and you're welcome to in enforce alcohol prohibition. Feds opted out. Uh, another state followed, one after that, and pretty soon there was no more alcohol prohibition. Jody Emery is the wife of Canadian pot activist Mark Emery, who's locked in a U.S. federal prison. She says the votes in the U.S. are very important here. I think the first impact of Washington voting to legalize marijuana, along with Colorado, is the message has changed. We can no longer say that Canada can't legalize it because the Americans won't let us. Now we can say that the Americans are doing it themselves first. But she knows the federal government having just introduced tougher new minimum sentences, does not agree. Recent surveys say well over 60% of Canadians want to see pot legalized or at least decriminalized, and only around 20% say keep the laws as they are. 
The next referendum in BC is scheduled for September 2014. If we can get our ballot initiative through and change the laws, then we could look at seeing decriminalization in 2015 in BC and perhaps a legally regulated market by 2016. But if we fail in this effort, it could be a much longer time. As long as Stephen Harper's in power, there won't be any positive changes at the federal level. You look at the United States as a four-star general. What we've seen is a willingness on at least a couple of the fronts to either hold the troops or possibly even withdraw them. But here in Canada, a drastically different situation, despite the optimism of some activists. Because in the short term, at least, the federal government has made it very clear they intend to continue to fight the fight. In Port Alberni, B.C., I'm Thane Burnett for QMI Agency.